one of my Porter Cable battery packs finally went bad. And it didn't wear out, like not wanting to hold a charge. It was working in the drill and then just quit. Put it on the charger and the charger flashes red. I can't complain about these packs though. I have four, and they are all many years old, and this is the first failure. I have two drills and an impact driver that these batteries fit, and I love the way the drills feel. That is the reason I bought them in the first place. I felt they were the most comfortable to hold. Just a couple of months ago, I was at Home Depot looking at some cordless drill kits, the allure of brushlessness and all that, but not a one of the drills felt as good to hold as the old porter cables I have. I wonder if that's why it failed. It was angry at me for looking at other drills. Of course, it requires a T10 security Torx driver to remove the screws that hold the pack together. Now that is much better than the pack being welded together, but still, security screws, that's just stupid. Any effort to hinder a customer from accessing something they bought is just short-sighted, and it makes me feel the company doesn't really care if they have a customer or not. The pack is made up of five 18650 lithium-ion cells and a small battery management board that has the pack contacts on it. I don't know if there is a fuse. I don't see one right off. Maybe a cell shorted out and is shutting down the pack. I'll check each cell first, and I would expect each cell to read 3.5 to a bit over 4 volts, and right around 4 volts, so that looks good. Oops, that's not right. Okay, not an open connection to the cell. So the cell itself has opened up. Wasn't really expecting that. But that does kind of explain why it just stopped working. These are LG cells, but I won't be replacing them with LG cells. I just don't see LG lithium ion for sale anymore. But that is one reason the packs lasted so long. It used a very good quality battery. I wasn't able to find the exact data sheet for this cell. I did see an LG DAHB 41865, which is a 30 amp discharge cell. I'll have to find a replacement that is close to that. I've decided to try these cells. Stats look good for them, and the price is pretty good. I don't remember using a battery from this company, but they seem to have a very good reputation. So, a reputable company, available, and not overpriced. Hopefully, a good choice. Guess I won't know for sure for a couple of years. If anyone watching has used Molly Cell batteries, please leave a comment on what you think of them. There is a soldered connection at each cell junction. I will unsolder these first. They are bare solid wire held in place by small plastic post, and they didn't skimp on the solder. So I'll have to make some extensions for these. The power carrying wires are not that large. They are short, but they look like maybe 18 gauge, no bigger than 16 gauge for sure. These end tabs have a hole in them that the wire is soldered in and again, a lot of solder on them. Once all the wires are unsoldered, I will bend up all the tabs to clear the plastic holder. The cells don't just fall out like I would have hoped. There's a temperature sensor that goes through a hole in the plastic holder, and it is coated with what looks like a gray silicon. I'm sure it's a thermally conductive adhesive. I'm going to try and pry the cells out. I don't want to damage the holder, so I will be a little gentle. Also, the cells still have a charge, so I want to take a bit of care and not short them out. There we go. A bit of the adhesive stuck to two of the cells, and maybe they got a bit sloppy and it looks like a drop got under one of the cells, but not too bad to remove. I'm going to pull a couple of the tabs off and see how thick they are. I can already tell they are thicker than any of the nickel strip I have. Here are the cells that were in the pack, and these must have been very good quality lithium-ion batteries. They have really held up. Date code looks like they were made in 2016, so they do have a bit of age on them. Here are the replacement cells. If I'm reading the date code correctly, they were manufactured the third month of this year, about seven months old. I don't think that is a bad date for a small quantity purchase. I'm going to place the cells into the holder. 
I think it will work well to hold the cells in the proper position for spot welding. I will double check and make sure I have them in the proper orientation. I'll use tape to hold the cells in the holder. A strip at the top and bottom should keep them from moving around. The connecting tabs on the original batteries were 0.25 millimeters thick. The thickest nickel strip I have is 0.2 millimeters. The original tab's width totaled about 8 millimeters, and the strip I have is 10 millimeters. I think that makes me about even. These are not big drills, so that will be plenty of nickel area to handle the current. I did a bit of testing on the old defective cell to set up the CD welder. I have the voltage set to 11.3 volts and a pulse time of 12 milliseconds. That should give me somewhere around 75 joules of energy to the welding tips. And I have the tip pressure set to 6 pounds each. That may not sound like much, but the tips are only 1 16th of an inch in diameter, so I'll keep my fingers well clear of them. I want to position the nickel strips so I can get two welds on each battery terminal making four weld spots, especially since I'm using such low energy for this 0.2 millimeter strip. It seems that it's the combination of the nickel strip thickness and the thickness and maybe the composition of the underlying metal that determines the energy needed for a good weld. This is lower energy than I would have expected, but the welds are looking quite good. For the two endpoint connections, I'm going to use the same strip, and I will solder the power wires to these strips. I will make sure the cut end of the wire strip is flat. Even with the pressure from the tips, it works best if the nickel strip is flat with no raised edges. For the positive terminal, I will trim off the corners of the strip. Not necessary, but I want the strip to cover as much of the cell terminal as possible. Now I will go back and add a weld to each terminal. Really, all the current has to flow through the spot welds, so I think four spots on each terminal should be good. I hope there is enough clearance to bend the strip over to make a well to hold the power wire. I'll put some flux on the connection. It really does help the solder flow on the nickel strip. I have the soldering iron set to 750 degrees Fahrenheit, and I want to solder it pretty quick. I don't want the plastic melting, especially the plastic cover on the battery cell. I will press down the connection as much as I can. It will be a tight fit, and then I will do the same thing for the negative terminal. For the battery balance connections, I'm going to solder a stiff wire to the center of the nickel strips. I'll put flux on the strips. And I want to be quick with the soldering iron. I don't want to melt any plastic. I'll tend the end of the wire. And again, I will be quick soldering it to the nickel strip. I've bent the new lead over and overlapped it with the existing wire. I'll put plenty of solder on the overlapped wires, and that should hold up just fine. Even with all the shaking, the battery pack will have to withstand. I did have to mash down the power connections a little more, but it goes back together. So that was better than trying to drill a hole in the thin nickel strip to put the wire in, and a lot less work. I'll put all the screws back in, and there it is. I'll put it on the charger and then try it out. Batteries, shipping, and tax ran right at $30, so not a cheap fix. But the 2 amp hour port cable battery runs about $50, and this should be a bit more powerful. For the little I have used it, I'm very happy with the rebuild. I like having my extra battery back. This does now seem to be my longest lasting battery. The original battery was listed as 26 watt hours, and this rebuilt one should be a little over 50 watt hours. Of course, I don't expect a cell that has almost twice the energy density to have as long of a life. But if it can last a couple of years, it will have been well worth it. Thank you for watching.